Hey guys, uh, I created a script recently, which is sort of my first pass at a, um, an auto-rigging script. I just wanted to show it off, um, give a quick demo of how it works and all that. This isn't a free script, it's just sort of just showing off. Um, clocks in about 2,000 lines, and it brings up this little UI that, uh, that auto-rigs a limb, either an arm or a leg, or anything in a sort of three-joint IK sort of setup. Um, upper arm, lower arm, hand kind of deal. Uh, you just grab the top joint, load it in, it'll automatically load in the next two joints. Um, set the global move so it knows where to put everything, and give it a prefix, which in this case will be arm, and then tell it which side to be on, left, right, or in the middle. We'll do right. Um, and uh, this section is sort of, I, I built the script to be kind of modularly written to accommodate a bunch of styles of controls. Um, uh, so recently I've been kind of working on a bunch of different ribbon rigs, which I sort of have been sort of considered like the atomic unit of rigging. It's sort of just between this top joint and the next joint, that's sort of one section of, of uh, um, the rig that you can kind of delve into and, and create sort of interesting bend controls and that sort of thing. And uh, you might have seen some of my previous ribbon rigs that do just that. They're just sort of um, unit long kind of rigs so that you can have a lot of complicated control in sort of a small area. Um, and this is more my most recent rig on that, so I just wanted to show that one off. I could write more other kinds of styles of controls in there, so that's kind of cool. Um, if I do no ribbon, it just does uh, a standard sort of FKIK setup with your, you know, pole vector and um, a lot of the features that I like, but without anything in between. Um, and if I say bend ribbon version one and hit go, I can show you how that looks. It looks longer, and uh, you get your in between joints with your uh, twist extracted between them and all that. And uh, so I'll show you how that works. This is going to be a snap doc, which I'll, I'll talk about later. It's just a little set of tools. Um, but we'll get to that after we skin this. So I'm just grabbing, just out grabbing the geo. Grab all these joints. And I'll just grab the hierarchy there. I'll just skin that. I'll do a regular. Um, oh, right. Skin. What are you talking about? Objects. Oh, okay, we're good. I guess it worked. Uh, so we can set that to dual quaternion and do a quick delta mush. Um, I'm all for uh, weight painting and working on that, but we're saving time here. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Clean up. Okay, so got a lot of the features that you'd sort of expect in an IKFK rig. Um, got your squash and stretch. Uh, you can see a little bit of squash in there. On a per joint basis, you get a little extra squash stretch that you can mess around with. You can sort of set the multiplier on these to, to uh, go like that. And that kind of looks, I mean, it looks pretty, it looks okay, I guess. Um, and that sort of changes the the form of that squash and stretch. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. You can sort of see how that works when I use the elbow control. Uh, and you can turn it off from here with the squash that just sort of turns off the volume preservation. Um, you got your molt length, so you can increase the length of these and the point at which it, so how long the arm is basically. Um, see. Uh, you got your anti-pop here, which basically, um, it's kind of subtle, but it reduces the effect of the uh, extension of the arm. Um, you might be able to see it when I, in comparison. So it still kind of um, extends all the way in a regular way, but it, it kind of eases in a little bit in a way that it kind of reduces the headache there to hide the joints here. Um, and yeah, so there's 
that. They got swivel and show the pull vector control. So if I wanted to, um, the pull vector automatically follows the hand, uh, and then I could swivel it from there. So for a lot of simple animations, that's all you really need. But you can just turn follow off and then animate the two separately as well. Um, I can also pin. Uh, if I have follow off, I can turn on pin and we'll take this elbow control and pin it to the pull vector. So if I just put that right there, I can animate from the hand in IK mode. So pinnable elbow. Um, all these controls have animatable pivots. Um, so if I move this, I can animate from there and I can actually, um, this is kind of a cool thing. If you go to your channel control and uh, bring your rotate pivot over. Um, you can see when I move this like that, then this value is now changed. If I key this, I mean, you can animate this, this value and I move it back to zero. Um, it'll change the way that this rotates. So, um, so that's kind of cool. That's not really, it's basically a Maya trick. It's not really a for this rig, but like sometimes there's there's a whole thing where you have to do something a little different so that it doesn't mess with the constraint values, um, which is just basically having an extra offset group. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out, that that's doable from all these controls. Uh, and so yeah, um, the FKIK switch is on each of these controls as well. Um, it has a shape node here, so you can switch between FK and IK here. And here, and that's just um, an instance shape node underneath each of these controls. Um, what I'll often also sometimes do is I'll just create an extra shape, um, put it like over here or whatever, and create four shapes, one for each arm and leg, um, and uh, I would just grab the shape node. Is this one right here, uh, and then parent dash s dash add, uh, and then I can lock and hide all these. And now this is your your FKI case, which this stays open when there's no other attributes on it, so um, it's kind of useful. And you can sort of set up your FKI case switch to be uh, like four circles, sort of all next to each other like this, and that way they become sort of pretty easy to just grab a selection for the two upper arms or the legs or just the left side. So that's something that I'll do. Um, oops, I'm doing that, hopefully, there we go. This is the global move, so here to do all scales. Um, and the scales and all that. So we can switch to FK and I'll show you some of those features. Um, got your standard sort of rotation um, sort of deal. Uh, all of the twist is distributed um, between these joints, uh, and the, it's distributed uh, irrespective of. It's not uh, based on the rotation x. It's so if I rotate in y and then rotate in z, you can kind of see what's happening. It's still twisting. You can have the show the value of the twist here, um, so it's based on the, the vector, I guess, um, and it'll work up to 360 degrees before snapping. Um, if you wanted more than that, it's usually enough. But if you wanted more than that, you could um, you can actually turn off the twist extraction uh, in this setting here, and then you can use these bend controls to do the twist automatically, like manually, um, and you can grab those from any of these bend controls. Um, other than that, the FK, IK, or sorry, the, the FK controls also do translation, um, which I think is kind of cool. It sort of gives like a little, I don't know, It's it seems more along the lines of how hierarchies should work in Maya, um, and it does that without uh, freaking out, which I sometimes will in a standard rig. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's like the basic gist of how uh, those work. Um, I also have 
these bend controls, and we'll talk about those. Um, if you turn on the bend here, it's sort of subtle until you actually bend. Um, you can sort of see what's going on. Yeah, do it like that. Um, and I'll just offset these visualizations. These are sort of my tangents, and uh, you can see they how they kind of work. They're basically just tangents. So I, I kind of like this method because um, a lot of animators know how tangents work pretty well. Um, so it's kind of cool for this this style of animation, and it follows along with the the motion of the regular controllers. So um, this sort of keeps its tangent at an angle depending on the angle of the bend here. So if I reduce the value of this bend, you get back to a regular elbow and rubber hose. You know, that's cool. And I can change the bias of that tangent so that it follows the shoulder or the lower arm. Um, and then you, your bend gets all pushed off onto this arm, or the upper arm, or the lower arm, respectively. Um, and then you can also rotate this, do all sorts of crazy things, change the bend value, and then rotate like that, and then uh, change the offset of the upper or the lower. Um, you can be anywhere in between for the bias. Uh, and you can even um, show the tangent. So you can actually have full control over how that works. Um, and also there's tangents on the shoulder and hand as well. Um, so I could have this bend push out this way, like that, and I can have it follow either, um, either pointing towards the elbow or, um, so that when I turn this it turns with it, or pointing out from the shoulder tangent bias set to that, so if I rotate this, that just stays pointing in that direction. Um, and I got the same thing with the hand over here as well, the bend value going out like that, and um, it either follows the upper, the lower arm sort of direction, so it points towards the elbow, or if I set the tangent bias, it'll point out from the hand, so if I rotate like that and you get sort of that rubber hose look, which is fun. Um, so this doesn't affect the twist, the twist is all extracted from here, so um, when I go like this, it just twists along the, the, the vector, basically. That's probably not true, it's not a vector. But it twists along the length of it rather than um, changing the effect of it, so I think that's kind of a good way to, to keep it from getting too um, crazy, basically. Keep it all stable and working and uh, reliable. Um, so another thing that you can do is uh, the snap dock, which I brought up earlier. Um, you can do FKI case switching. Uh, and that's kind of nice. Uh, when I pull this out um, with these values off, it doesn't look like it's really stretching, so I have this effect here, which um, as it gets tugged outwards, it just pulls in the the, the uh, bend mult values here, so that they uh, it just pulls out all the kinks, and I can increase the distance that it takes for that to happen, giving sort of a different sense of um, how that works. And that just keeps the the animator from having to go in and, and just manually do that every time they want to stretch this out. Pretty cool. Uh, I also have all these, um, I have uh, these zero buttons, or these default buttons. If I hit default on all selected things, it'll, it'll switch back to its sort of standard values. Um, if I wanted to default just one aspect, if I wanted to set bend back, I could just select this in the channel box and just hit default and it'll do just the one and it won't reset these. Or I can double click and it'll do everything. Or if nothing is selected, it'll do everything. So if I go like that, and default. I can set default with this tool over here. Um, so if I move this over here and I select these, 
can set that as the default position for the elbow. Um, and then when I move it around and go back to default, it'll set back to those, those values. Whereas zero will still zero it all out. So that'll just. Um, so you can have sort of a, a, a um, just a pose for like your T pose, and then sort of a more sort of um, uh, relaxed kind of pose as your default pose, and and sort of work from there. Um, I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and you can set those to any value. So another thing that you could do is um, if you wanted to set this to like 0.5, and move this over, so that maybe you had a really short arm like that, and have that as the default. All you'd have to do is grab those, and just set default. And now whenever you do anything crazy with that, it's follow. I'm actually going to push this, put this over here and set this as the default as well. There you go. Now you got a short arm. Um, and whenever you move or mess with it, you can just... Oop. That was interesting. Oh, okay. We set the squash back to zero, so we can, we can set that as the default as well. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. So that's the IKFK setup here. Um, there's also this follow snap option. Um, so this this pull vector all automatically follows the hand um, for the most part, and it does a pretty good job. If you sort of rotate this around, it follows without snapping. Figure that out. It follows without freaking out. Um, uh, but if you wanted to get to a point where the elbow sort of stayed where it was without having to um, you see when it moves and you set this off and it switches its space that it exists in and it moves all the way over here so um, I have a button that just you snap it, follow is now off um, and it stays in place so that's kind of cool. Uh, now if I want it back on I can just I can move it over here and then follow snap back on again. So that's that. I um, think I went over everything. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. I, uh, I had a fun time doing this, so if you guys have any questions, if you need, want a tutorial on how I went about doing any of this stuff, just let me know and I'll, I'll bring it up um, next video or something. Uh, yeah. Have a good one, guys.